yeah, we're somewhat cut off from the rest of Oakland. Uh, just the other day, there was a train going down uh, San Leandro Boulevard, and there was another train coming down Eat, and you couldn't go anywhere. You couldn't go anywhere. You were trapped. And that's sometimes how, how, you know, you feel when you drive in, you know, is that once you kind of get in here, you almost feel stuck. You know, if you go up on the corner and you look at some of the individuals that I went to school with or that my kids, and, and you see them doing the same thing they were doing 5, 10, 15, 20 years ago, and you can understand what I mean by being stuck. I mean, if you look into the eyes of a lot of the individuals up on the corner and around, there seems to be a sense of hopelessness. Michael and I were talking about how we were really very upset that here we have this wonderful youth orchestra in Oakland and it was basically all an, an all-white orchestra. So I told Michael that I would like to start the ball rolling by finding a couple of kids from Oakland schools that were talented and that might be interested in studying. The violin class at Sobrante Park was a particularly uh, well taught and what happens when you have a violin class that's really well taught is that the students are first of all more interested than they would be otherwise, but also the ones who have uh, additional interest, uh, superior interest and talent, will shine through. And so he was down in Sobrani Park and he found that one of the teachers suggested two girls. One of them was Danielle and there was another girl. Michael Morgan came out to Sabrani Park and Miss um, Patterson was having a, a recital, a performance, and uh, he saw Danielle and he saw that she was the most improved student. So there's, we've started a program called Music Pathways in which we try to identify kids in public schools that wouldn't have an opportunity or wouldn't even know about the possibility of taking lessons and finding them and giving them, starting them out very young with some pre-instrument training. She was the only kid in the entire orchestra who sat down at the first rehearsal and knew her music fully and flawlessly. She nailed it. I could see her. She that was when I was in fifth grade, and he came to visit the school. And then I found out that he like had a scholarship available for me to take lessons with Ms. Schwartz. So. I took it because I was like, okay, that's cool. Then I started violin with Ms. Schwartz. Um, uh, she was offered a scholarship to the Crown School, and at the Crown School, she found out how challenging uh, things could be. Danielle came one day to a lesson and said, you know, I'm really tired today. And I said, well, what happened? Were you staying up and watching TV too much? And she said, no, my dad made our garage into a music room and we stayed up till two in the morning practicing music together as a family. I couldn't hope, I couldn't dream beyond what I had experienced. My parents never talked about college. My never, parents never pushed me toward going to a university. And, that, and that's the question. Um, I think the attitude was that you can always find a job and if you're working, and if you're providing for your family, then you're doing well. And I think it was don't push the envelope or don't hope too high and don't reach too far because you may be disappointed. Don't ever let people tell you that you can't do it.
arts, of course, are all about the imagination. It's all things you can't actually see. You can't actually see music. Uh, you can't actually even see, you can't really see a painting until someone puts it on uh, a canvas. And the, uh, the impact it has is that when one student sees it, a student, that another student has that kind of ability, it encourages that second student to imagine things that he or she can't see also. Part of the reason the Taylors do so well is they have this incredible family that just is, you know, they're, they're really there for them and they know, you know, they have a sense of good work and, and just that being there and following through is really important. I've seen the change within my family and within my small community that people are believing to believe are beginning to believe that 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 that, that we can participate we we can have the same experiences as others we can flourish and we can grow and we can become a part of 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 of, of the larger community we don't have to feel isolated we don't have to feel segregated we don't have to feel as though uh, we're set aside over here and this is just for us and this is just for them you know, that we can participate and actually feel uh, for the first time uh, like citizens mm -hmm. of the United States. And, um, and again, you know, you look at, at um, the success stories and you just think, oh, you know, what might have been. I sure Michael Morgan, my daughter Danielle and Rachel uh, perform during the program. And, and when the kids from the uh, Junior high school, some came over and from the uh, elementary school, uh, watched them perform and, and realized that they live down the street and that uh, they're a part of this neighborhood and a part of this community. You know, the kids were in awe. So I think that they all um, really are excited about music, but since there is really no steady music program in the schools and they never really have access to it except for when I go play, so that's why I'm frustrated about that too. Because, I don't know, that's what got me started to, you know, want to be a musician, but it's gone for them. And generally, it's not for lack of interest on the part of the young person, but a lot of the time it's family circumstances or just too many obstacles for the parents or grandparents to be supportive of the child's effort. And this little girl who wasn't allowed to take lessons wrote one of the letters. This girl said that music was the most important thing to her, but I don't think I can say that. It's okay. It's okay. This is... Anyway, she said that the year before she had been offered a scholarship to take lessons, and it was the happiest thing that had happened to her, but it was too much for her grandmother. And so she didn't get to study anymore, but she said, someday I'm going to play the violin.